In this video we talk about the basic principles of our panel objects. As you probably remember from the previous uh, video uh, panel surface, there are two different kinds of uh, surface paneling. You can have um, a one-dimensional array and a two-dimensional array. On the left side you see a two-dimensional array, it's related to the U and the V, so if I just change uh, uh, my um, index from um, 6 to 12, you can just see that my surface uh, will change. Now we have 12 objects in one uh, in the first dimension and still 4 ob objects in my uh, second dimension. And there's this one dimensional error which is not related to the U in the V direction of my surface uh, but related to the topology, so it, uh, related to the amount of polygons. And if I for example choose uh, this, uh, this surface and I update my array just go now into auto update you can just see that it now fits on uh, uh, the other surface and if you count it just uh, fits uh, to the amount of uh, polygons we have on this kind of surface. In the rest of my video I will just work with two dimensional areas but everything I will do uh, will also be possible with uh, one dimensional areas. We will have a lot at a lot of surface paneling and uh, it's not about learning the program Power CD, it's just about the principles, but just uh, because I'm repeating always the same steps, I just want to give you a quick view how it's working with Power CD so you also get an idea that this is really easy once you're familiar with this. So it's always like this, I have a basic object and this object is already quite uh, complex, uh, we talk about uh, the principles uh, later on and uh, with this in um, uh, in my mind, I just go into create parametric array. I can change uh, the, the array count from uh, 10 by 6, for example, and then I automatically create a um, two dimensional arrow and just call this parallel test. And I go into create and it asks me if I want to use this transform FFD box. Uh, we talk about this later. I say yes, and this time I say no, it's not so important. I just want to give you a feeling about the program. So and this is what it looks like. I have a node for my um, for my power uh, 3D paneling here, and uh, in this node there are a lot of polar menus because I have a lot of uh, uh, modifiers here in my list. And for every property in my modifier list, uh, I have um, something in power 3D. So I have absolutely full control of my uh, of my. Um, 3D object. Uh, I just close this because it's probably a little bit confusing. So the only thing I do is I just use my um, surface modifier, I just open my surface modifier and I just add it to my uh, um, transform and transform means that all my objects will move to my uh, selected surface. I will pick my surface with this uh, tool and now I already have selected my panel surface. I can update this and you can just see that the objects are already moving to this surface but that's not enough. I need control points, I need control points so my uh, objects will be transformed to this um, surface. So what I use is I use the control points for my master uh, in my FFD box and I go into check all and now I selected all my control points in my FFD box. I can just drag and drop and choose again the surface controller for these kind of control points. And in this case I use instance. We talk about this in another video. Why I do this is just now that you have a quick look what I'm actually doing or what I do with all my other surfaces. I pick my surface again and uh, just because I use instance I always have to add one controller to uh, control the sub-objects of my um, of my 3D objects. This is a sub-object controller and if I then go into auto update it takes a while, a uh, very few seconds and then you can see that I already paneled my objects on my 3D surface, on my uh, panel surface and then I can just change uh, the dimensions. I can probably just say it should have a height of eight centimeters I just go into uh, update and you can just see that my surface now has eight centimeters and I can also change the properties. 
for example, if I go into inset, you can see that I prepared an inset uh, modifier. This is, by the way, an edit poly, which I used in animate mode. So what I can do, uh, I can just also add a modifier to my inset. Have a quick look what this inset actually does. I can change the value from 2 to probably 10. And then you can just see it's bigger and smaller. And I can just use whatever kind of modifier I want to use. For example, just a, a render modifier. I just uh, click and add a render modifier and just say I want to have a random from 1 to two centi 10 centimeters. I go into update and then you can just see that it just creates randomly these kind of openings. So that's the basic principles of how you do this. It's anyhow now not so much about the uh, software anymore, so what behind the principles of these uh, panel objects. Okay, in terms of the panel object, the first thing we look at is the basic shape or the shape of the base of my object. And I have different kind of uh, possibilities. Uh, shape, uh, the basic shape can be uh, quad-based geometry, means I have uh, four uh, edges. It can be uh, triangle-based uh, geometry with uh, three edges. It can be uh, hexagon-based geometry and uh, with uh, six edges or you can create your own pattern. Um, you're probably a little bit surprised that um, this two-dimensional um, area is a polygon and uh, that you can use uh, triangle-based geometries. Uh, you do, do this in uh, one way. I will quickly show it to you in Power 3D. So uh, this is uh, the node of my uh, power triangle-based geometry. And we have something in our sub-object controller, which is quite handy. You can choose a pattern. The normal, uh, the normal pattern is a grid. This is based on, um, on quad-based uh, uh, polygons, but you can also use this triangulated. This means it just arrange uh, my um, my objects uh, uh, triangulated, which is really uh, really handy. That's the same thing with my hexagon. What I do with hexagon-based geometries, also on two-dimensional arrays, we can just choose in our um, uh, menu and sub-object controller hexagon and then it will arrange into hexagon. You can choose between horizontal and uh, vertical um, to uh, to make it fit. So that's uh, not so important. We look at this into uh, at this closer in another video or you can just choose patterns means you can select a pattern and then just say I go into customize and select this sample patterns and then something like this will be the result. So you have a lot of options, even if it's a two-dimensional arrays, to, um, to work with really interesting uh, objects and uh, probably the shape you would like to achieve in your design. When we look at the basic setup of our 3D panel objects, uh, there are two different principles uh, you can go for. You can uh, control your uh, object uh, based on your uh, base uh, and I will just show you what this means. I have these um, geometry, it's actually an editable spline and on top there is a shell modifier. And if you do this uh, and uh, panel this on uh, the surface, you can just see these gaps between uh, your objects. It depends on the thickness, obviously. For example, if I change the thickness of my object and the thickness was controlled by my shell modifier, if I change the in inner amount uh, to zero, you can see that uh, the objects uh, fit really well together because there is uh, nothing, uh, there are no dimensions. But always if you add a thickness, then you can just see that these things uh, have a start to have gaps. Okay, the other method uh, is uh, that you can control your 3D object by a lattice box. Actually, uh, this we do via the FFD modifier. That's a really common method. You can also uh, do it by the full 3D object uh, in terms of using the mesh or possibly also one editable spline. And we also have a quick look at this. Here in my Power 3D settings, you can see that my object is controlled by my FFD modifier, the FFD modifier on top of a box. And uh, if I just change uh, my dimension and set dimension, 
you can actually even give it the dimension zero and uh, then we have a really thin uh, thin object and if I just give this uh, a dimension like I did before with my uh, based um, object uh, then you can just see I go into auto update that here it works really well you can just see that all my objects um, are distorted on my surface and there are not any gaps they fit really well together we just turn it on a little bit again in perspective and you can also see that in my wire mode uh, frame these are my uh, objects and when I move them uh, you can see that they just fit uh, together and there are no gaps between so this is one of the basic uh, decisions you have to make and uh, both have their advantages and disadvantages and once you did it uh, you uh, have to build a hierarchy and you have to think about the hierarchy and what we see here is just one example that uh, things can become really complex uh, and um, you can do a lot of really really nice things uh, what we see here is uh, again something based on a really simple editable mesh this is one simple editable mesh I'll just turn it around a little bit so we can see it better it has different kind of um, edit poly modifiers in animate mode on top that's really important you have to use uh, animate mode otherwise the information doesn't go to power 3d also this we talk about in another video and uh, then on top we have a shell modifier in terms of the dimension and if you use this for your power 3d then you can immediately have something really complex for example something like this and you can change uh, the opening of these single objects in a really nice uh, way I will um, I just will quickly show it to you I can uh, for example just let it be controlled by a bitmap I just choose a different bitmap and just choose these numbers in my material editor and I go into auto update and then we can just see it's just calculating and the whole thing is controlled by this bitmap means uh, the position where there is the white color it doesn't open and the position where uh, it just has these uh, kind of um, uh, transitions where you can see that you can define the opening in many many ways if there are a lot of options I just opened the power node of this power surface paneling for you and if you look at the full information of this power node I think it looks uh, pretty scary but at the end of the day it's uh, not as bad because if you have a look at this uh, properly and I just uh, close it again uh, then you see uh, you have your normal transform options and everything else is related to my uh, to my modifier so I have the shell modifier with all his uh, its functions uh, you can see this uh, right now inner amount outer amount I have my edit poly modifiers and they have a lot of options uh, and uh, they're all here in your path 3d and at the end of the day your master point so what we have here in this example it's an uh, example where it's based on um, the base of the object I didn't use an FFD modifier and you can do a lot of things uh, mainly everything else everything here is uh, you can use uh, with parameters for example if you uh, add something like a slider you can control the thickness of your panels and I just move it here with this slider and you can just see that auto updates if I use auto update and the things just become thicker so full of full control of my whole, whole design so let's have a closer look at the objects you can uh, actually use with PowerCD you can uh, use objects based on uh, editable uh, mesh you can use objects based on editable spline and you can use objects with a M uh, FFD modifier on top okay let's look at the objects based on editable mesh this is my first example it's a flat object and if I just turn it around you can see uh, it doesn't have any uh, it only has a x y dimension and doesn't have a set dimension and uh, this is also a result there if you look at my power 3d there are no gaps between there's one important thing we're always talking about editable mesh and uh, next editable spline and not about 
added mesh. I can also add an added mesh modifier, but that's a completely different thing. It is the editable mesh or the editable spline has the lowest uh, information about your geometry. Okay, flat objects work pretty well. And we already had it before. What happens if you have a flat object like this one? This is again my object. And I just put a modifier on top, like a shell modifier. Then uh, this is what's happening. My um, panel objects extrude in their normal direction. And uh, this means uh, that you can automatically see these uh, gaps. And it really depends on uh, how much I extrude this with my shell modifier. The, uh, the bigger the amount, the bigger the gaps. Okay, uh, you can also use uh, editable mesh and just use them in Para3D as whole objects. Uh, and this is uh, one example. I just turn it around and if you just see it in your modifier, in my modifier list, uh, you see that this is an editable mesh and it's not only a two-dimensional object. It has all, um, all the geometry in it and you can just see the amount of vertex points. These are eight vertices selected. I just put an edit uh, poly on top to uh, to go into um, uh, not to have this smooth uh, smooth uh, rendering on so everything uh, has hard shades and uh, the result is uh, actually quite nice. If you look at this in perspective uh, you can see that it has a really nice uh, surface and what I actually did is I just used um, one uh, one cube and I just uh, twisted uh, twisted the top and that's it. And if you look at this in Power 3D, there's one thing we have to be aware of. I used my uh, edit mesh as a full object and it just used the amount of vertices I have in my object. And you can see this object has eight vertices. And if you look at this Power 3D, then you can see that it just used eight objects, uh, eight vertice points to um, transform your object. If I see my other Power 3Ds and if I see my Power 3D uh, with a flat object and 3D modifiers uh, on top, then you can just see that these uh, just uses four vertex points, which makes absolutely, absolutely sense because this is what we need for uh, for uh, as a minimum for our surface cladding. And this also means if you have really complex objects uh, with many uh, vertex points, it's definitely not a good idea to uh, use uh, this kind of method because uh, you lose performance and uh, uh, it's too complicated. You have too many vertex points to control, but uh, eight or probably 12 vertex points, I think this is the maximum you should work with or otherwise you'd use a different method, the FFD modifier, and we talk about this later on. Okay, the second type of geometry we look at is editable spline and uh, this is my first little example. This is one editable spline with a face extrude on top uh, and uh, this just makes uh, it um, uh, a polygon surface and if you look at this editable spline and I just go into my vertex uh, level and go on a wide mouse click, then you can see that I used corner points. Okay, let's see what this means in my uh, Power 3D. We have a nice um, a surface paneling and the objects are really close together because uh, it's, uh, these objects don't uh, have a set dimension. Okay, um, quite similar setting and there's one difference. If you look at uh, here at my editable uh, spline and I go on, uh, go to my vertex level and I just choose right mouse click, then I see it's not corner type, it's, uh, it's uh, Bezier type. If I ch uh, change it to corner type, then it looks like this. You can also go to uh, smooth or from smooth I go back to Bezier and then I come to this kind of shape. And if I use this for surface uh, paneling, you can see that um, we can control the Bezier curve and we just look at this in our path 3D right now. Here we can just see our uh, Power 3D node for this kind of geometry. And if I zoom closer in, then we can see under master that uh, 
there are all my spline points. We can see there is uh, spline vertex point number one and there are uh, actually three positions. This is my actually uh, spline uh, point, my vertex point and uh, these are my handles, my inner handle and my outer handle. So at the end of the day I have four multiplied by three positions uh, means uh, 12. That's why you have so many uh, um, uh, wires here connected to my surface controller and uh, if I just uh, look at this one here I just disconnected and I can then go into the menu and I just see for my uh, in rack handle I just have X, Y and Z and if I just change these settings uh, in the X dimension to 30 you can just see that uh, my objects start to distort and it's actually the busy handle I'm just um, uh, transforming. We can connect it again and update our um, our paneling. I can do the same with my vertex point. I just disconnect it and uh, I just choose the setting of my vertex points. The other one has to be uh, disconnected and if I just uh, move my vertex point you can see what's happening. Uh, this is moving my vertex point and not my busy handle. So these two examples were again based on um, a flat object with uh, modifiers on top. We can also do it, what you can also do with splines. We can again uh, use splines as uh, 3D objects, uh, editable spline. And uh, let's look at this example. This is example is um, based on uh, three splines, one, two and three, they are attached uh, to each other and uh, then I have a cross-section modifier on top and a surface modifier. Probably one thing to say, I just used uh, my splines and uh, added this round corner in uh, vertex mode. So I already have, uh, let's see, 24 vertex points and I can use this for surface paneling uh, to produce, uh, for example, something like this, which uh, looks uh, really, uh, really nice and also works uh, properly. There's probably one disadvantage, um, also just because I use these uh, corner types. We now already have quite many um, vertex uh, points on editable spline level, which we have to control with my surface modifier actually 24 which is in this case quite a lot. It could have been less if uh, instead of these corner types I would have used these Bezier te uh, technology like before and then I would have had f uh, three, um, three lines multiplied by four edges to, uh, 12, uh, 12 points to control which is then uh, I think again uh, fine and uh, works probably better. My last example in terms of uh, editable spline and uh, surface paneling is probably really interesting. Uh, it's based on two, uh, two lines. I just attach these two lines. It's important that these two lines actually are corner types. And then you can attach a sweep modifier. And we just see what this sweep modifier does. If I just turn this object, you can see that I can choose different kind of profiles. Uh, angles and uh, tubes and all these kind of uh, kind of things and you can use this you can also use this for power 3d so what you then uh, do is you um, uh, make an array out of this you choose this surface and uh, we have again um, four vertex points uh, with each uh, three parameters just because uh, we have uh, we have two lines, and this means uh, actually four four uh, vertex points, and uh, then we can just adjust it uh, uh, in Power 3D again. We can also, for example, just say that we want to increase the amount and uh, just have 20 objects in um, second dimension. We just have to wait a little bit because that's already quite a lot, and uh, then probably. Oh, this already looks quite uh, quite good. So let's have a look at the last option, a 3D object with FFD modifier on top. And I think that's a method you will uh, actually use quite often. If I just choose my uh, uh, panel object, you can see it's a really simple box. Um, 
as a basic uh, geometry I just put my FFD box uh, on top uh, two by two by two so I have eight control points all together and if I use this in Power 3D you can see uh, when I use it on a surface like this uh, also a cylinder that's also something I can use uh, in two dimensions because I can unwrap it and it doesn't have any singularities I talked about this in my second video about my uh, panel surface uh, then you can see that this is uh, the result and uh, it just goes around the corner and it just doesn't distort the box uh, it's not bending it just uh, moves uh, moves the edges okay a second method is we can use uh, the modifier uh, FFD modifier 3x3x3 three by three by three. if you look at this uh, that's a different kind of lattice uh, we have this modifier and uh, we have uh, 27 control points and really important if I move these control points uh, for, for example I just move these one in the middle it doesn't do anything uh, the reason why it doesn't do anything because uh, the geometry uh, doesn't have these options so you need a geometry which has more uh, polygons or it has to be um, uh, something like uh, need busy handles or it has to be a patch uh, when I just uh, have a geometry with more um, with more segments I just did it with my basic objects here uh, then I can go into my modifier and choose these control points and if I move this up you can see that the whole thing is uh, distorting and bending and if we use this in Power 3D and we can see this on this object then the whole boxes uh, don't only uh, move uh, their um, uh, the edges of my uh, of my object it also um, transform the shape if, uh, if I just choose this panel and uh, the panel of my 2x2 two two, um, array and I just go into isolate selection and we just have a look at this a little bit uh, closer just move them together then you can see that the one with a 3x3x3 three by three by three, uh, modifier is bending and here it's still completely straight so um, that's something if you want to have something more smooth or if you really want to follow uh, the basic um, panel surface more properly then you can also use something like a 3x3x3 three by three by three FFT box this definitely has its price if you look at um, my path 3D again then you can see that my 2x2x2 two by two by two FFD box has 8 control points and now this one has uh, 27 control points this is also, also uh, a reason uh, that it reduces performance and just because I moved my objects away always if I do things like this and I go into um, update and I just update my power, power node then these objects uh, just move back again to its original position means on uh, my basic panel surface the last example uh, is uh, one example if I have a really complex object for example like um, like this little uh, uh, Eames, um, Eames elephant uh, on, a, on a surface and I just want to use this for surface paneling it's quite obvious if I would use uh, edit, editable mesh I would have uh, tons of vertex points I can't do this and uh, this you just simply do with a FFD modifier you just put an FFD modifier on top and then you can just panel this on the surface and you can do many kind of transfer, uh, transformations in a parametric way and you only have eight control points uh, to, uh, to work with this kind of object this was again a really uh, long video and it's not about uh, again not about learning the program just to understand the principles as a quick summary one and two dimensional arrays we just use two dimensional arrays and you really uh, keep an eye on what kind of basic shape you are starting if they're quad based 
or if they have these triangle shapes uh, or the hexagons or if you use your own pattern. This is only related to two-dimensional arrays. You can do it in a way that it's controlled by uh, the base of the geometry or by the full geometry or a lattice around this means the FFD modifier. Everything else, every other complexity uh, comes with your hierarchy of your um, of your modifier stack so that's also really important uh, issue and then you have different kind of uh, object types you can work with editable uh, mesh uh, if it's not too complex you can distort whole um, whole meshes you can work with editable spline uh, let's see it's uh, it's here an editable spline you can use corner points or you can just use uh, BZ vertex points and have a lot of options in working with these kind of things. You can also use editable spline as um, as 3D objects with a cross section modifier, or you can just use them uh, as lines together with a sweep modifier on top. Or really common, you just use your FFD box and two by two by two and. Uh, then you can use whatever kind of shape you want uh, to have in this 2x2x2 FFD box or you can just have it a little bit more uh, smooth and you can just choose a different kind of FFD box for example like this 3x3x3. Most important uh, point for the next step is to get a feeling of different kind of settings uh, when it makes sense to use um, uh, cross section, when it makes sense to use boolean operations or um, why do I uh, build up my uh, topology like this. Uh, we have a look at this in further videos, also the basic function of our surface modifier, so you can uh, start your own design. And um, with my uh, internet page, digital um, design, digitales entwerfen.de, you will find an index of these contents of my videos and scroll much faster to my videos, so you don't always have to watch the full video in total. Thanks for watching.